Hi, please excuse the crudity of this video. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. I just found an interesting thing which goes way back to a video I done, which I'll probably have to link in way back like in the first 30 videos or uh, something like that. Check this out. I got my new 4K monitor, which is the uh, BenQ EW3270. And watch this. There we go. Did it. It switched off and switched back on when I get up off my chair. Hang on, I'll do it again. There we go. <laughs> and then switches back on. It does it <laughs> almost every time. And I thought, like I originally thought that this was something where it was like some whiz bang auto sensor power saving thing where it was sensing that I'm like sitting here and when I move it switches off. I didn't think much about it and uh, no, look at that. <laughs> and you may have, uh, boy, you may be able to guess. I don't know. Guess. Answers on the back of a postcard. What the problem is here? No, it's not some whiz bang super technology inside this that's sensing that whether I'm sitting in front of it or not. If I put my headphones on, maybe we can't hear this. Maybe oh, I'll try and mix in the audio, see if we can hear it. But let me stand up. I'm not sure if that'll come through or not because it depends on the system, but I can hear a little click, click, click in here when I stand up. And that's due to the static discharge of me standing up from the chair. Like if I stand up slowly, oh, that's gonna, it's gonna make a fool of it. But I can feel I'm wearing kind of a little bit, not, not stretch denim, but you know, kind of like a little bit stretchy jeans. They are a bit staticky, and I can actually feel the static build up when I stand up on here. So when I stand up off the chair, it causes that impulse. And I've got a very interesting story back in that old video about uh, how this caused a really troublesome bug back in the day in the lab at the company that I was uh, working at, and finally figured out that uh, getting off the chair was the problem. Um, and generating static and that was upsetting my long-term experiment or whatever it was anyway um, That's the problem. So this monitor is I've got another BenQ monitor here, which is a 24 inch one exactly like they're not exactly the same model but near enough um, and It doesn't do it at all. So there's some sort of static impulse, which is obviously getting into the uh, you know the audio System somehow I'm not sure how it's getting in so that's why you may or may not hear that click but there you go. It's interesting. It I don't know the path that it's getting in. Is it via like the HDMI cable, like the shield on the HDMI cable is the electric field that I'm generating, actually inducing some voltage in there, which is sort of like uh, you know tripping tripping this thing up and causing it to reset like that. But anyway, thought I'd show you that. It's really interesting. And just to show you the uh, difference here, I'm actually. Now sitting on a cardboard, <laughs> a 121GW box, and let's give it a go. There you go. Doesn't cause the problem, because the fabric on the chair combined with my jeans, and probably, you know, it probably has like one nylon thread for every other thread just to make it a little bit stretchier, is um, causing that static and if I whack my headphones back in, yep, confirmed, no more click in the headphones. So, and, and I can feel it as well. I can feel um, that there's less, like almost basically no static buildup. Whereas I can physically feel that, you know, like your little hairs stand on your end and stuff like that. You can feel that uh, static impulse. So there you go. Interesting, huh? I never thought I'd uh, revisit that old video, but yeah keeps coming up okay so let's get a slight bit more scientific about this shall we I got a scope here watch this ready hopefully it won't make a fool out of me ta-da there's our impulse let me do it again I want the damn screen to go off ah oh, come on ta-da there's our impulse that's at uh, what's that 10 nanoseconds per division there so you know me 100-ish meg, something like that, so near enough, and that's uh, what my original uh, video 
was about was that uh, I originally um, was picking up because the scope probe is an antenna. If I actually disconnect this, we probably won't get any coupling because we don't have an antenna. There you go. But you plug it in and got our antenna uh, earth lead on it and no wackers straight in there like that and no it's not the um the piezo ceramic effect in there which is an entirely different lower frequency thing this is a high frequency impulse into the lead of the oscilloscopes coupling through the front end it gets all complex and through like common mode interference and stuff like that and it generates um because static can generate tens of thousands of volts and generates an electric field around you and that's why you know you can spark across and that's why it uh whoop. oh <laughs> there we go just sitting down did it and that's why it uh can generate impulses like that in the scope and obviously something's going into the system here uh, on the um, shield of the mains and or HDMI that's where it's sneaking in perhaps that couldn't you know that'd be my guess but it could be, certainly be just going directly into the circuitry of the monitor I just don't know maybe I can pull it a bit closer or something like that so I'm going to even though it may not have the frequency range required I'm going to try some uh, little um, uh, ferrite clamps because uh, I'm just going to whack them on the HDMI and the mains cables to see if I can stop them actually getting into the monitor and causing uh, whatever it is uh, in the part, you know, the monitor to reset or maybe it locks up and it's got a watchdog timer or something like that. It takes a couple, it takes two or three seconds to recover. Going to put one of these clamps on the HDMI cable and... <clears throat> see if that's the uh, issue you know you could get maybe a better quality HDMI cable some of them even have the ferrite clamps built in and stuff like that I'll see if I can reproduce it because all I need is one failed result to prove that that doesn't fix it so I'll get back to you and check this out I found a way to that feels like I'm generating a lot of static a big packing bag and one of my um, <laughs> one of my multimeters. If I put that in and out, wow! I can feel the hairs on the back of my arm, but I can't do anything. So I can't trigger that. That's right near the cables, right at the back of the monitor. So I'm not sure. Nah, it's, it's the magic chair. I'm telling you. Oh no! Got it. There you go. Got it. So that had the that had the ferrite uh, clamp on it down there so there you go um, didn't stop it um, not terribly surprising I thought you know I'll give it a go but you only have to get one case like that for it to fail and it's not you know it's obviously um, it still doesn't mean it's not getting through the HDMI cable uh, you know getting on getting into the receiver in there maybe doing some SCR latch up or something like that and the monitors detecting that and as I said it's probably got some sort of like watchdog timer or something like that and it just like resets itself something else is latching up in there it kind of detects that which is really good and fixes itself so I guess that's a pretty good design um, but yeah it's susceptible this one here does it, and it doesn't do it. This one over here doesn't do it. So something very specific in there. But that's pretty hard, even though if you put it through, uh, you know, uh, compliance testing and stuff like that. I don't know uh, compliance testing for monitors, you know, whether or not they do some sort of ESD test or anything like that. No idea. If you do, let us know in the comments. Um, but even if you do that, it, you know, <laughs> there's so many injection paths and different ways to go in there. It's infinite. You can't possibly test them all. So there you go. It's not that. Eh, might have to do some more work on it. <laughs> anyway, hope you found that interesting. I'll link in my really old videos at the end of this. It was actually a three-parter. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and all that stuff. Catch you next time. Hello.